Peace and Safety News Desk, March 25th. My name is Daniel Vallis and welcome to our channel. Definitely check out our High Watch Review playlist for a lot of the backstay that we're continuing on in this video. We assume you have watched it and been with us, but we know there's some new people, obviously. Highly recommend this playlist to get caught up to speed with the different subjects that we're talking about because there's multiple things coming together at this prophetic time. So definitely review all those things that have been showing us the time. All those trumpet calls. When we're looking on the celestial clock, right now on March 25th, the sun is in the second fish of Pisces, still in line with the clock that the enemy has been apparently pointing to with what we've covered before on those subjects. But also Jupiter is still within the water stream that Aquarius is pouring out for the fish at his feet. The stars in that area of the water stream have long been considered the bubbles in the water stream. So the water stream is a little bit larger than those actual stars there because they are within the water stream. So somewhere around March 31st, somewhere around there, give or take a day or two, Jupiter will be further along the line to where it's reaching further along the edge of that water stream. So between now and the 31st, we know Jupiter is going to be in line with the Aquarius water stream constellation portions, but also touching the tip of Pisces, the second fish there as well, which is interesting. Just a reminder with the Alpha and the Omega that the vernal equinox point is right there at the second fish. So we have a lot of reminders about the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, which is emphasized on the last page of the Bible, right? At the same time, it also emphasizes the one who pours out the living water too. So we see the heavens are still declaring this beautiful picture, bringing our attention to it, also pointing at the fish now too as well. And this whole area of the sky where Pisces, Aquarius, and Capricornus are, and Fomal Halt with the southern fish there, that whole region is considered the celestial sea just because of all the aquatic creatures in that area. And there's the dolphin and Eridanus, the river, and Cetus. There's several aquatic creatures that are specifically in this area. So this whole area has a connotation of water, which again goes with the pictures we see on the last page of the Bible, reminded about the first and the last the sun along its circuit too. And that is what we see right now, the heavens pointing at and declaring this beautiful picture. We've been watching Jupiter just like the wise men watched Jupiter from the Star of Bethlehem events 2,000 years ago. But we saw the Star of Bethlehem parallel events in 2015. You may have remembered those. The news was talking about how those had happened 2,000 years. And we've been following its course to where it has brought us to right here in context of all the other prophetic events that we've been talking about in our recent videos, especially too, which has brought us here to the last page of the Bible, where we are looking up and lifting up our heads like we were told to do, that there will be wonders in the heavens, that there will be even specific celestial signs that warn us and tell us that the great and terrible day of the Lord is about to start. And so in context of seeing all those things, we also see where's the heavens pointing right now? Where is that star that we see again it is pointing to a beautiful picture of the one who pours out the living water right here at this incredible time with so much going on right now. Again, definitely review the timeline. Links in the description box. There is a wide view and a short view. The wide view gives you a better view of multiple things coming together. If you are new to this channel, you may only think there's one or two things that we're looking at here. No, there's multiple things that have led us and brought us on this learning journey where we already knew this time was very important before everything started to really hit the fan with World War III and talk of nuclear war and all that. So there's a lot that we're going to look at a little bit today of why we know this time is very, very important. So definitely review the timeline. And if you looked at it today, you might have noticed that I added several things and I also expanded it a little bit. And this also gives us a better idea of where we are now when we see what is in the future, also along the celestial clock that emphasizes where we are now in context. And this is why you have to review our playlist to understand what we're talking about, because there's a context here of multiple things that we are looking at, that we know the enemy's looking at, that we know the celestial heavens are declaring, that the geopolitical warnings are declaring. There's multiple things that you have to understand the context. But it's all coming together right where we are now. And one thing, as the Lord has been showing us so incredible wisdom and the depth and the richness of everything that is here that needs to be reviewed, it's obvious that the enemy has been looking at this time for a long time. And we've covered that in several of our recent videos too. 
they know something is very important about this time. They know the celestial warnings that will declare when a certain time for the great and terrible day of the Lord is coming. There is also a time that as a Christian, we have to understand that they're being allowed to say certain things, such as the peace and safety calls that are prophetic and have prophetic implications. They have to be allowed to say those. So when we see them and hear them saying them at certain times on a high level and daily talking about nuclear war and World War III, then we know that they are being allowed to say that because it does fulfill Scripture, and very strongly too. But we also know that that is leading up to the sun destruction that's coming, the great and terrible day of the Lord that's coming too, that's going to start with the revealing of the Antichrist, but then lead right into World War III, which is the second horse, and he's coming to take peace from the earth. So this is something I've been just pondering over the past few days of as we observe how choreographed the enemy's working is and the mystery of iniquity is working to this time, and obviously they've been planning it for generations and generations, and while they do not know the day or hour, and neither do we, we don't know the exact granular detail of exactly which day is Jesus Christ coming, both sides have a very good idea that this is a time of expectation for him. Particularly when we know the day of the Lord, the tribulation is about to start, the great and terrible day of the Lord is about to start, and the rapture is going to happen right before that too. So we both know something's very important here, but the enemy does apparently have some very specific knowledge of the time and also the celestial clock, and obviously they've had the advantage of studying it a lot longer, whereas a lot of us were very recent to looking at the celestial clock from a biblical perspective and and so they do have a technical advantage over us. There are things that they do know. And the Bible even tells us that the demons do know when their day of judgment is. They know when their time runs out eventually. And even Revelation 12 tells us that Satan knows when his time is short. The Bible does tell us that the demons and Satan do know certain things about the end time. And it's not that hard for them to count backwards from those times and get a very good idea of when Jesus Christ will be coming to start their judgment, when it will start to open the seals. And also they know when their son of perdition is going to be revealed too. A very good idea of that. And so all the mystery of iniquity has been working toward that, preparing for that. And Revelation 17 plainly tells us they are of one mind. They are working ahead of time to hand over power to the beast, which again also emphasizes they do know a timetable. Don't miss this. With everything you see in the news right now, the enemy does know a timetable. And when we see them accelerating that timetable to bring about an expected end, which we've been warned about what that end is, it's sudden destruction, and it's the start of the great and terrible day of the Lord. When we see them working in a synchronized motion to a timetable, that emphasizes they know what time it is, when, especially when it lines up with what the heavens are declaring and the prophetic warnings that we are told we will hear here at the end of the last generation too. This is Everything's lining up. And so when we look at where we are now, we understand the enemy does know something about this time. They know they're watching something about time because their news announcements are paced to a certain time. They're not rushing into World War III or they're not necessarily announcing that it could be tomorrow, so to speak. They're drawing it out to where the anticipation is pretty heavy and it's building every single day, but even they can't say it will be tomorrow, you know. They are pacing it and they are building it and you can see where it's going. And apparently with the rate that they are building it just over the past few days and weeks, it is gonna be somewhere very soon. Somewhere very soon. But we can also tell that they are pacing the information and their actions, timed with what's going on in Russia and Ukraine and the world financial system too, it's all paced. I hope you can see that. It's being done deliberately. They're going forward very deliberately, but they are ramping it up. Because again, they don't know the granular information of what day exactly the Lord will be coming. What day will the Son of Man be revealed? We don't have that understanding either. The angels up in heaven who have the most insider information, they don't know that either. But we are told to watch, and we are told to lean to watch. We will see the day approaching. We will know where it is. We will just know that he's going to be coming in a surprise manner with a degree of ambiguity because he wants to catch his servants on their toes. But it is also apparently being done to take advantage of the enemy too so that they cannot make certain claims. There is going to be a degree of ambiguity and surprise for the enemy, too. 
We both don't know the granular information about the V-Day, but we can see that we're close enough that the enemy can start pacing the information that's going out. By the celestial signs that warned about the great and terrible day that is coming, a very distinct celestial clock declaration, which again goes with time. And so as I was considering all this, that the enemy does apparently know something about time, and apparently they know there is a limit. There is an expectation that certain events that Christ will come before a certain amount of time runs out. You can see that in the way they're pacing things because they're building things to an expected end. But you can also see the effects of physical implications by the sanctions that are put in, the ramifications that it has for the dollar and currencies and supply chains, the days of Noah and a lot life was normal scenario. We can see by what they're setting in motion and pacing it to roll out way. We can tell by how they're pacing what they're doing and rolling it out at a certain pace that these conditions are not going to last for long. They are building to something, and they're building apparently with an idea that it's only going to be within or expected within a certain window. And so as I was looking at everything that the Lord has shown us about this time, and just chewing on and say, what is the first clue that would let them know to pace and time their news announcements and what they're doing around the world? What are they potentially using to pace their actions here? And the Lord brought something to mind based on the celestial sign that we saw. If you zoom in, one thing I added was that on April 2nd, right there in the middle, you can see there's going to be 100 days reminder going back to the celestial signs. So in just about a week, not that far away at all, there's going to be a 120 days reminder. And that's all we can say about it, a reminder counting from the celestial sign that warned the great and terrible day the Lord is coming. It reminds us that Noah's day was also given a 120 year countdown till judgment came. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. And this was before the flood came. Noah was given the understanding that you have 120 years before the flood comes. And apparently this is what Noah was preaching. He was a preacher of righteousness and telling the world that judgment is coming. Time is going to run out when judgment will eventually come. It's not going to be delayed anymore once time runs out. And so this is a very strong reminder considering we are told about the days of Noah and Lot. And here in the actual account of Noah, the understanding that there was a countdown. And the world apparently knew it. Noah knew it and he preached and warned about it. So apparently he was telling them about the countdown too. A countdown of 120. They had years and in that time frame the ark was built and prepared and supplied and got all ready. And then right when the countdown ran out, Noah and his family was called into the ark. And they went forward on faith. It hadn't started raining yet. Judgment had not come yet. They went in during the days of Noah and Lot while life was still going on like normal. Right before time ran out and the flood started the very same day that they went into the ark, Jesus Christ said. So this is just interesting to consider and the Lord brought it to mind. A count of 120 is associated with the story of Noah. And also there's an association of seven days with the account of Noah too. How he is called into the ark seven days before the flood actually came. At the end of a countdown, the world knew there was a countdown to judgment before that great and terrible day came, the flood. It's just interesting that this very significant number of 120 is associated directly with Noah's flood. Which reminds us in Matthew 24, Jesus Christ was telling us about prophetic things that we would see. He doesn't tell us the calendar. Don't look at the calendar. He tells us things we will see. He was talking to fishermen. He was talking to their average person. He's telling when you see this happen, when you see Israel replanted, when you see all these things, know it is near even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. It will all be fulfilled within a certain generation who saw Israel replanted. There is a countdown. That's a ballpark countdown. We know it will not go beyond that. And we're definitely on the latter end of that generation too. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. 
A lot of people get confused about the day or hour, and he tells us exactly what he's talking about. He's talking about the day that your Lord doth come. There is going to be some ambiguity, but you have a very good idea of when it will be. That's why you need to watch. And if you're going to dismiss watching just because you think, oh, well, we can't know. No, he said that's why you need to watch. Because you won't know the granular information, but you have a very good idea when he's coming. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Twice he emphasizes this. And so as we look at where we are now in the general context of the days of Noah and Lot, that checklist, how people are going on, life is normal. They are concerned about some of the things they see in the news, but they're still going to the lake. They're still making vacation plans. They're still planning on planting a garden. They're still making marriage plans for spring. Life is still going on like normal. But Jesus Christ emphasized during these conditions, it will be just like the days of Noah. And he emphasizes this two times. The coming of the Son of Man. It's going to be during that time. Watch therefore, because you know he's coming during this time. And therefore, be ye also ready. Make sure you are ready so that you are not robbed when he comes like a thief. He's coming like a thief. Luke 17, he emphasizes it again. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Remember Lot's wife. Four times now he's emphasizing, I am coming during the days of Noah and Lot. It's going to be just like that, likewise. There's going to be a countdown. There's going to be an understanding that judgment's coming. Even in Lot's case, the angels plainly told him, the Lord is going to be judging this place. We need to get out of here right now. There's an understanding that judgment was coming, a countdown. And four times Christ emphasized, I'm coming while life is like that. Before judgment comes, the days that were before the flood, it's going to be like the days of Noah. When the Son of Man is revealed, it is going to be a visible event, just like the day of ascension. And so these are some of the things that we need to keep in mind when we look at what is coming together right now. We see in a couple of days, just at the end of next week, a reminder about 120 days. We cannot say anything prescriptive about it whatsoever. All that we can say is we're in the days of Noah and Lot right now. And obviously the first thing that comes to mind when we see that we're approaching 120 days from the sign that warned us the tribulation is coming, the great and terrible day is coming, it doesn't take that much to put two and two together and say... You know, I don't know if these are connected, but it's very compelling that they probably are. Because something is urging the enemy to ramp up and pace and build these warnings about World War III. And every single day that they go forward, they actually make it worse. So they are building to something. They know something that apparently there is a window when this expectation runs out. When a countdown apparently runs out, we do not know what it is. But... We are told that there is going to be a warning before that day comes. We are told we are going to hear certain things that will tell us that day is coming. And we are going to see the birth pangs. So we automatically know even from scripture that there is going to be an idea. We will not know the day or the hour. But we will have a very good idea that we are running out of those days and hours. An idea that we are running out of time. That a limit is about to be reached. Again, I don't know what that is, but when I look on what the Lord has been showing us about the sign that warns it is coming, and we start counting the days from that and understanding we're in the days of Noah and Lot, and then looking at the world and seeing how the world is changing, and they are really throwing gasoline on the fire to change the days of Noah and Lot right now. We know just by looking at the world, the days of Noah and Lot, it's, it's running on fumes right now too, already. So we already know time is almost up, and they are accelerating to make time run out. Because apparently they know time is almost running out. And it would line up 120 days from the sun being turned into blackness and the moon into blood. Would end exactly, exactly right at the first day of the new year on the biblical calendar. And that catches my attention because that's not coincidental. Again, that brings to mind the Alpha and the Omega of the year. Of the biblical calendar year. The first day of the biblical month. Which again... 
because it's lunar based that will line up with the lunar cycles on the solar lunar calendar which again goes back to the first page of the Bible how God created the lights to be for signs and for days and years and throughout prophecy we see also years equated to days many times and that's also alluded to on the first page of the Bible too and here we are looking at the celestial signs by the celestial lights on the last page of the Bible where we are reminded about the Alpha and the Omega also the Alpha and Omega beginning in the ending of the first page of the book of Revelation and the last page of the book of Revelation and then we look at the first and the last beginning in the end of the year just a few days after the celestial circuit and we see a combination of the Sun and the Moon, the solar lunar, coming together, pointing to this time, reminding us of how both of those, the Sun and the Moon, 120 days ago, told us that the great and terrible day of the Lord was coming. Again, I don't know the day or hour, but I do know this is very compelling and lining up with everything that is transpiring right now. And it would be foolish not to consider or highly watch, and that's all we can do is watch it. And particularly when we see that right around March 31st, right at the beginning of April, that's when Jupiter is going to be at the edge of the water stream in Aquarius anyway. So that's not coincidental either that that celestial picture, that celestial declaration, which is declared on the last page of the Bible, declared on the celestial clock, is also pretty much easing out right at the end of 120 days too. Something to think about. A compelling reminder. That's all we can safely say about it. It's a very compelling reminder that reminds us the days of Noah and Lot. They're running on fumes right now and they're about to end. And the enemy is doing everything they can to accelerate them ending too. Apparently paced to something they know about time running out. And looking at prophetic events in the celestial clock, we should have that same understanding too. We are in the birth pangs right now. We're not waiting for them to start. We're in them right now. We know the baby is about to be born. So it's a very compelling reminder that should sober us as we go forward every single day redeeming the time. 1 Thessalonians 5, we are reminded but of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman or child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Watch and be sober, or that day will overtake you as a thief. It shouldn't. I mean, you have scripture, you have all these warnings that shouldn't overtake you, but it will if you are not watching, if you're not sober, if you're not asking the Lord for wisdom. We are foretold this because once that declaration goes out that day, that sun destruction is coming. It will not be delayed. Those birth pangs will start. The baby of sudden destruction will come. And as we can see, we're in the birth pangs right now. It's already on the way. It's already on the way. And the Apostle Paul is telling us the same warnings that line up with what Jesus Christ told us about watching and being sober when we see certain things. And the Apostle Paul emphasizes, don't worry about the times and the seasons. Don't look at a calendar and try to say, oh, is it going to be this month or that? No. You have no need to even, it's pointless to even look at that. The day of the Lord is coming as a thief. What you need to be paying attention to instead of the calendar is when they shall say peace and safety, then come a sun destruction. He tells us what to watch. Right after he tells us, don't get caught up in seasons and appointed times and all of that. Because Christ doesn't tell us to look at a calendar. He doesn't tell us to look at appointed times. He tells us what to look at. The Apostle Paul repeats and tells us what to look at and what to listen for. And when we see all those things coming together, watch and be sober. I've had a lot of people over the years ask me, Oh, what do you think about this month or this month? And they'll ask me something that's like two or three months away. It's like, are you ignoring what's right in front of us? God shows us one step at a time. And if we're not going to act on what he shows us, then that's not being faithful. He shows us what's right in front of us. He brings our attention to what's being said right around us. Because right around us is what he wants us to see. That's what he wants us to hear. And that's where he wants us to be aware of where we are. Where are we? Where we are right now is where he's drawing our attention to. That we are running out of time today. We're not waiting a month or two to run out of time. We're running out of time today. We're already in the birth pangs today. And because we are already here, we need to watch. We need to be sober. We need to be sober. 
When we zoom in on the timeline and look at where we are right now, what's going on all around us right now, there is so much going on right now. Friend, I need your prayers for strength and wisdom. There's so much happening. I, it's hard to cover all this information before another avalanche of stuff comes out because they are really accelerating the timeline right now. They do know what time it is. And they are putting out these warnings every single day now, accelerating the situation. That's who is enabling it right now. They're inducing the labor. They are the ones, the same ones who said peace and safety. They're inducing the labor because they know there's a certain time. There is an expected delivery date, a time frame when time runs out. And somewhere around the end of that, apparently, the Son of Man will be revealed on some of the days that are remaining, apparently. So definitely over the past week, we've seen everything accelerating. Every day it's accelerating more and more. They're throwing another log and gasoline on fire every single day. Just the other day on the 21st, a new thing that came to my attention was the U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris repeats four times in a speech the significance of the passage of time. It was a very awkward speech, but she was definitely emphasizing the passage of time, the significance of the passage of time. And what is that? where you go from one point in time to another, over a duration, a passage over time. And that is what we've been looking at even prophetically. Since the sign that warned us the great and terrible day is coming, there is a passage of time. When the cause of peace and safety go out, there is a passage of time, but sudden destruction is coming. Either way, there is significance to the passage of time. Are we paying attention to the passage of time since those signs went out, since the warnings were said? Those signs, those warnings tell us we are running out of time. We should have the full expectation that there is going to be a moment somewhere of significance where that time runs out. And even the enemy is drawing attention. Pay attention to the significance of the passage of time. The passage of time over time. And what passage of time have we observed? A countdown of 120 days since that warning which reminds us that the days of Noah and Lot came to an end. They came to an end. And that was the significance of the passage of time during the days of Noah. The enemy knows what time it is, and that's why they emphasize the clocks and the time at the Olympics and the other subjects that we've talked about. This is why you need to review the timeline. This is why you need to go back and review the playlist to be reminded there's multiple things that tell us we are running out of time. That's the whole purpose of signs and warnings, to remind us the warnings are for us Christians that we are running out of time. We are running out of time to make ourselves ready to watch and be sober so that we are not caught unawares, so we are not overtaken. Remember Lot's wife. March 23rd, and this is prior to their NATO and G7 meeting on the 24th, but they announced that they were going to draft a statement warning China against aiding Moscow. Again, they're acting hysterically. They're acting irrationally with all these sanctions. They're sanctioning everybody who doesn't help them and anybody who's not on their side is suddenly the enemy. And that's what they're taking aim at China because China is refusing to condemn what Russia is doing. And so NATO says, oh, well, you're not on our side, are you, eh? They even said we're drafting a statement to warn China because they're not getting on our side on this matter. And of course, that's not going to go over well with China. Especially after the meeting on the 24th, expect some very incendiary statements by NATO and the EU and America toward China and toward Russia, and fully expect that they're going to retort back with belligerence too. Again, every single day they're making it worse on purpose because they're building and they're butting heads more and more. They're deliberately making it worse as we get closer and closer to the 120 days. If that is truly the countdown for this time, which it's very compelling, then we would expect them to see them push everything to the limits, especially as we get closer and closer, so that it's very ripe with anticipation that nuclear war is imminent any moment now. Especially after this meeting on the 24th, if the 120 days is significant, expect them to make it very ripe that World War III is imminent and that relations between all these countries is breaking down rapidly. Expect that. Look for that. Russia to demand hostile states pay in rubles for gas. This is very important. This caught a lot of people's attention because a lot of the sanctions are around using the dollar and the SWIFT system for purchasing Russian oil and gas. So Russia basically said, okay, if you're going to mess with the contract on your end, even though the contract stipulates being paid in dollars, 
because you're showing yourself unfaithful with the contract and acting hostile and unfriendly toward us, we are going to make some changes to the contract too. We're going to insist from now on, starting next week, they said, you're going to have to start paying in rubles, which is very, very important because this forces all the European countries that rely 50% on Russian oil and gas. That's where they get half of it from. They're going to have to now switch from dollars to rubles to do all their transactions. Because they, they haven't put sanctions on getting their energy from Russia because they get 50%, half of all their energy from Russia. So there's no way they can change that. They can't back out of that overnight. So Russia's going to say, okay, you got to do all your transactions in rubles. Which means, because these are very expensive, those countries are going to have to offload the U.S. dollars that they have in their foreign exchanges that they use for these major purchases which is instantly going to create demand for the ruble and also depreciate the dollar. Depreciate the dollar rapidly. Why? Because some of the biggest countries with the biggest demands who have 50% usage from Russia are going to suddenly opt out of needing so many dollars. The demand for the dollar is going to drop like a rock real soon. And you watch, come next week, which is their deadline for this, you're going to see a lot of these European countries start offloading a lot of dollars. A lot of dollars. And you're going to see the value of the dollar drop. And you're going to see the value of the ruble start rising. Start rising higher than it was even before the war. And even just with this announcement, it caught the financial news that the ruble drastically started coming back up in price again. Why? Because it creates demand for the ruble. It also lessens demand for the dollar, which is going to destroy the dollar. There's growing concern about tightness of diesel supply, especially in Europe. And that's what some of the protests in Germany and Spain have been about. But you're seeing more and more reports that they're saying we're pretty thin right now, but it's not going to get better. It's not going to get better. So we have to keep up these purchases from Russia. We can't we can't go cold turkey here. And that's Europe's position. So that puts them in the awkward position of we have all these dollars that we did all these transactions in. We're now going to have to sell those dollars and buy rubles, which will create a ton of demand for rubles. So we can do transactions for the diesel and energy products that we need, which means they're basically going to have to find a buyer and sell at a discount the dollar. The dollar. And of course, this is going to create a lot of tension with the U.S. too, because their dollar is going to drop like a rock. The Kremlin, Russia would only use nuclear weapons if its existence was threatened. And again, every single day, the topic of nuclear weapons or World War III is in the news and being talked about by major leaders. When was the last time this happened? A long, long, long time ago. But it's in the daily news now. Multiple leaders talking about it, but also the threat that multiple nations are involved here. You know, during the Cuban Missile Crisis, is Russia and... America and they were involved and it would have been more localized. But the situation we see today is a true peace and safety situation, which is why it's talked about in the news so much, because it threatens all of Europe and the major players, the world superpowers, China, Russia. If something goes wrong, everybody knows it's going to be involving everybody. It's not going to be between one or two people. It's going to be everybody, all the major players. So this subject has been very frequent lately. And in context of that, the Kremlin is emphasizing Hey, y'all need to chill out. If we're going to use nuclear weapons, we're only going to use it in these situations where our nation's existence was threatened. And of course, then that got everybody's feathers ruffled just by making that statement. And again, you, you can't even talk about the subject on the world news scene without bringing up the subject or making it worse now. Or particularly NATO is making it worse and the EU and America is making it worse because they are acting very hysterical about it. Foreign Minister Lavrov. Any NATO servicemen in Ukraine will be targeted and lead to a direct clash. Again, because there's growing talk about intervention by NATO, and that's what they're having their meeting on on the 24th, is how can we help out Ukraine here? Well, Russia's putting a kibosh on that and saying, hey, any NATO servicemen in Ukraine, as soon as they step in, they're fair game. And you know that's going to lead to wider clashes once that happens too. So don't even go there. Again, they're setting out their red lines, but NATO is already pushing them. But they're also publicly talking about this. This will spin out of control real quickly if one certain party really goes past the red lines. 
NATO Secretary General Stoltzberg. Countries will commit to, quote, major increases in troops along Europe's eastern flank. He warns, Russia must understand that it can never win a nuclear war. And so again, you're seeing a lot of bravado on either side. More so NATO, US, and the EU of really pushing their luck because they're acting like a bully reminding Russia that, well, we can fight back and we can hit you back too and you won't win. It's, they're acting like schoolyard bullies. It's hysterical. And again, every single day, this subject is being brought up. This having a major meeting on the 24th while you're watching this video, probably, on this very subject of nuclear war and the possible uses of nuclear weapons that will probably result in World War III. That is the subject of the day, which threatens peace and security. And that is why it is such a hot subject right now, lining up exactly with what prophecy said we would hear when they say this. And it's going to be obvious why they're saying it, because it is definitely threatened. That is when sun destruction is coming. You automatically know where things are going. They are inducing the sudden destruction. Russia's Dmitry Medvedev warns nuclear dystopia is on horizon if U.S. destabilizes Russia. Again, NATO makes their threat of, oh, you can't win a nuclear war, implying, hey, we can beat you up. And then Russia comes back, oh, that will result in World War III. And they're butting heads about nuclear war, talking about World War III and the nuclear dystopia that would result. The end of civilization. This is the daily news right now. And again, this reminds us, where are we right now? We're not looking a month or two in the future. We're like, what's going on right now? They are in the process right now, today, of inducing the baby of sun destruction, which means it's about to pop out any moment. We need to pay attention. We need to watch and be sober with what we are told to watch. And it's going on right now at our feet. And probably by the time you're watching this video, they're going to be finished with their NATO and G7 meeting. And they're going to be making statements about some of their conclusions and make some speeches. And then that's going to get other things ruffled up and... You're going to see them induce it more and more from this point on out. Again, that's what we've seen, and we know they're inducing sun destruction. So every expect the statements throughout this week and this weekend to get worse and worse to where it gets really ripe, the expectation of sun destruction. Very, very ripe. That's where we are right now. So again, definitely review the timeline. We see on the celestial clock where we are. Now we're in the picture on the last page of the Bible, which is also warning about the plagues that are coming upon the earth. We are even reminded about the Star of Bethlehem sign which brought our attention to look up and lift up our heads back in 2015 and we followed Jupiter to where it is right now on the last page which also brings that back to remembrance the Lion of the tribe of Judah. The bright and morning star Jupiter at this time is a morning star, a very bright morning star too. So, so many reminders of that right at Aquarius, right at the water that is being poured out. The living water that is being poured out. Again, beautiful pictures. And right between the fish, right in the celestial sea, which again also reminds us of the days of Noah. The days of Noah. All this water. So many things reminding us where we are right now. Reminding us of the exact passages where Jesus Christ himself said, This is when I am coming. It's going to be just like these days. Just like these days. And he repeats it four times. It's going to be just like these days. The days of Noah. The days of Lot. And at this time, we have a very strong reminder of those days, and that time is running out and judgment is coming. Which also coincides with the last page of the Bible, which also coincides with the warnings of peace and safety, which we were specifically told this will definitely mark that sun destruction is coming. You'll hear them say it, you will see them induce it, and you will know it's coming. And when you see that, therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. We need to be taking heed to ourselves not being caught up in the cares of this life and everything that the world is chasing after during these days of Noah and days of Lot. Let's not be like them. Make it very clear that we are very aware of what time it is that we are watching what we are told to watch. We are listening to the warnings that we are given. We are watching what the heavens declare about this time. So much reminding us the birth pangs tell us what is coming. Are we living as though that's coming? That the flood of judgment is coming? That the Son of Man is coming? And he's coming during the days before the flood. Right before the flood. Noah and his family went into the ark on a perfectly normal day. Perfectly normal day. They had to head knowledge that time had run out. The 120 years had run out. They had come to the end. Now God called them into the ark. The world had heard the warnings, but from their perspective, nothing was changing. 
But Noah and his family went forward obediently in faith on the warning that they were given about the days of Noah. And they went forward in faith obediently, and it was not until they were fully in the ark that the Lord closed the door. The Lord closed the door. Time was up. It was time for judgment. The very same day that the door was shut. And this is what we need to keep in mind as we look at the timeline, as we look at what the heavens declare, as we go about our daily business and our obligations that we have. We see life going on as normal, people pursuing their plans, getting ready for the weekend, going to the lake, doing all their normal things. And yet the world has heard the warnings that the great and terrible day of the Lord is coming. And also the warnings that sun destruction is coming and there will be birth pangs. And once you see the birth pangs, that tells you the baby is very close. Very, very close. And this is what we see at this very late hour. Our Father has given us so much wisdom about everything coming together from a biblical perspective. And then how we should be living in light of it. Again, our attention was drawn to the sun being turned into blackness and the moon into blood. We did a study at that time. Watch our videos back in November of 2021 of how it matched up. And we made sure and compared and eliminated other possibilities that, yes, this fit the bill. Particularly exactly with Hebrews chapter 10 of him standing up and starting to make his enemies his footstool. And this is a day we were told we would see approaching. It's in that same chapter. And so with all those reminders, at that time we even started doing the count. Because we knew, okay, this tells us that sun destruction is coming. There is an understanding that time is going to be running out soon. And we had also heard calls of peace and safety. So we also knew that there is a time limit here somewhere and we see an enemy doing certain things that they also know that there is a limit on time. So we started counting from that sign. We were counting from the moon turning to blood but then also doing a separate count from the sun because that was the second finishing part of it. And one of the first counts that we looked at was the day of Pentecost and crucifixion because that passage was also referenced then. And so we looked, does that count apply? And as we looked at that certain window of does this apply? We started to see incredible things with peace and safety and what the enemy was doing building up during that time. So we definitely noticed even during that window where we started counting, the enemy is up to something. We know the enemy is up to something and they know something about time running out. That there is some type of expectation of when sudden destruction is going to be coming. A ballpark figure apparently. So we counted even back then and where we are now, we're just about a week away from 120 days from that event. Counting inclusively will end about April 2nd, which is right at the beginning of the first month of the biblical year, too. So very significant that it ends on the day of a beginning and an ending of the year, which is related and calculated with the sun and the moon from the very first page of the Bible, which tells us also that they are for signs and for days and for years. And so when we count 120 days from that and it ends right at the beginning and the end, it's very compelling that we are running out of time. But we were also reminded very early on, one of the first counts we did was with the count from crucifixion. And so when we look on the timeline and we see in that first month that is about to start, there is the crucifixion that took place at Passover. And we know the sun was blackened on that day and then also apparently a blood moon was seen at that same time too. Because Peter brings the subject up at Pentecost, just a few days later, Acts chapter 2, verse 16. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And I will show wonders in the heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before that great and notable day of the Lord come. This is very, very significant that the Joel 2.30 passage is only quoted one other time in Scripture. And that was on Pentecost, but pointing back to that this happened on the day of crucifixion. Related to Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, who is also the Lion of the Trap of Judah. Peter was saying, this fulfills that prophecy. And even in verse 22, he says, Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Peter was telling them, y'all saw what happened the other day with the sun being turned into blackness. Y'all saw that. You couldn't miss it. And apparently there was also a blood moon at the same time too. That's why he quotes this and then he says to the people, you know this. You know these signs, these wonders are associated with Jesus Christ who died and was crucified just a few days ago. 
This was a fulfillment of this passage spoken by Prophet Joel. There is also a future fulfillment too that does apply to the great and notable day of the Lord. But this is quoted specifically that this was fulfilled at Passover, at the crucifixion, and the people saw it. The people saw it. And so again, this is something that we keep in mind when we look at the timeline. Understanding that we have already in our time seen the great and notable day of the Lord coming foretold by the sun being turned into blackness and the moon into blood. Back on November 19th of 2021 and December 4th, 2021. Two weeks apart. And right at that time we had an understanding, okay, time is short now. We are running out of time. We are running out of those days and hours. There is a countdown now. We already know peace and safety calls had gone out even at that time too. So we knew sudden destruction is coming. There is a countdown. Let's start counting. And then now, as we look at the timeline, we also see in just about a month, there's going to be a reminder, again, of that celestial sign that happened in the past. An incredible bookend, when you think about it, we, we have seen coming up on a reminder of when that was seen. Which also reminds us of what's on the last page of the Bible. The reminder how Jesus Christ is the root and the offspring of David. He sprang out of Judah to be the Lamb of God who would present himself as an offering on the cross to be our atonement sacrifice, to become our high priest. And it was because of what he did on the day of Passover at the crucifixion, he can offer the living water. Which is what we are reminded here on the last page of the Bible that is also declared on the celestial clock now too. So as we look forward on the timeline, we can see a reminder of where we even are now, what Christ already did. What is already done? He became our high priest. He sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. Those pictures at Passover, those pictures at crucifixion, they're done. They are fulfilled once for all forever. Which, in a way, also reminds us we don't need to go to those pictures. On the timeline, that's already done. We're waiting for him to finish what he started, where he's going to stand up and start making his enemies his footstool. That is the next prophetic chapter. And when we look on the last page of the Bible, we are reminded the first part's already been done. The Lamb has already come. He's already died. He's already shed his blood. And because he has done that, he can be the mediator between God and man. He can offer the living water because that is all done. He is the beginning and the ending. The first and the last. The Alpha and the Omega. And we have... A beautiful celestial tapestry showing, reminding us of what was done, what is about to be done. Right at the threshold, the first and the last, that also marks the segment of the first month when those first part was done. And here we are coming to the ending, where we are reminded about what is about to come. Right with a reminder of 120 days, right in the context of the days of Noah and Lot, right with so many reminders that we are surrounded by the birth pangs right now. And this should sober us up that we're not waiting for large amounts of time. We are running out of time. We are running out of time. And the more that we look at what our Father has shown us, that reminds us again of His beautiful tapestry of redemption. And again, going back to Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10 assumes you have read the Hebrews before that where He accounts and rehearses how Jesus Christ became our high priest. Everything that He did for us. That brings us to where He's waiting till His enemies be made His footstool. And we will see that day approaching. Hebrews 10.25, we will see that day approaching. And as we see that day approaching, we should be exhorting one another, encouraging one another, and loving unto good works. Because we will see the day approaching. We will see we are running out of time. We will see we're in the days of Noah and Lot. And we will also see that those days are very short-lived because we are already in the birth pangs and they are inducing the sun destruction, the flood of judgment that is coming. Those storm clouds are already on the horizon. This is why we need a wide view when we look at where we are right now. Because it emphasizes where we are right now. The world especially heard a ramp up on February 23rd, 24th of the calls of peace and safety at the UN Security Council, the UN General Assembly. And pretty much since then, the world major leaders have been talking about the subject of peace and security every single day now almost. And nuclear war and World War Three, all of that. It really accelerated on February 23rd, 24th, but that was not the first time we heard that. And so if you are new to this channel, we're not going forward just on that. That is the cherry on top of everything that we've heard them say. Because if you've been with us for a while, back in December of 2021, shortly after 
the sun was turned into blackness with that eclipse there in Antarctica was a reminder, the one year anniversary of Trump's peace efforts. Remember his major peace plan, his vision for peace? The one year mark of his last major normalization of relations with Israel was just a few days after that eclipse. We had that one year peace and safety reminder because they use that exact phrase in the official White House documents about peace and security, peace and safety, very publicly. We made videos and talked about it at that time. And so even at, right after that celestial sign which warns about the great and terrible day of the Lord coming, we came to the one year mark, which is a biblical cycle used for pregnancy pictures. That's what was prophetically used with Sarah when the Lord told her that she would be bearing a son and it would be in one year from that exact day in the cycle of life. And so as we heard the peace and safety calls, we were applying that one year cycle, one year countdown, the passage of time to that warning. And so seeing that right after the eclipse, we knew we were right on top of things ramping up. And we could tell that in the world too. What we saw the other day on February 23rd, that's just a cherry on top. We have seen them building back on January 20th of just this year. That is when the inauguration of Biden supposedly happened. But officially that marked the end of Trump's administration, the administration that had been pushing for the Vision for Peace plan. So the ones who were involved in that, that also signaled the official end of their capacity and function in doing that. So that was another one year anniversary that really caught our attention, particularly because at Biden's inauguration, Lady Gaga had that big gold obvious dove right on her chest there. Hard to miss, very blatant. So even the themes on the very same day of ending Trump's peace push, very reminders that they know exactly what time it is and the messages that are being sent out and that sun destruction is coming. It was on that exact day that the doomsday clock was updated or just announced that they were keeping it at 100 seconds to midnight, which they moved at 2020, the exact same day. So they know what time it is. They know what time it is. And all this has been catching our attention that we could already see them building up to that things were getting pretty ripe already. We could already see the direction since the celestial sign warning of the great and terrible day coming that they were already building up to that expectation of sun destruction. And then just a few days after the anniversary of the ending of Trump's administration was the two-year mark, just like the wise men, which marked the start of when the peace and safety was revealed, his vision for peace plan was made. So we suspected that was a very significant marker too, watching both the beginning and ending of his vision for peace efforts which coincided very closely and we could tell the enemy was up to something. So we were definitely watching things unfold while we were going forward faithfully and obediently with the peace and safety calls we had already heard. But then a few days after that, we were looking at the two year anniversary on a biblical calendar of when the peace plan was revealed too. just considering the Gregorian anniversary and the biblical calendar again, just a few days apart. And so this is very important and also part of why you need to review our videos because there's a lot that's been building since the celestial heavens declared the great and terrible day is coming. And there's also been multiple things that the Lord has shown us and brought us forward. And over that time, we observed the enemy is building up to something. The world is getting a lot more perilous just over this time with the calls of peace and safety that we had heard and that were already at very high levels with President Trump in America, and they're really pushing it like no other president had been before. And we knew the enemy was aware that some destruction was coming. Doomsday was coming. And it was right as we were approaching those two-year anniversaries that the Lord was also bringing to our attention some of the things the enemy was doing related to the cows that had the seven on their head. Remember that? And Ben, the player with the Steelers there as well. The enemy started doing things very suspiciously since the doomsday, and that connected some dots and we could also see and the Lord brought attention and wisdom to the seven year warning since the last eclipse that happened at the North Pole. Another major international sign and we talked about that in our recent videos. And so it's incredible to see how the Lord gave so much wisdom as we went forward obediently in response to what he was showing us right at our own feet. He was giving us more wisdom about what's going on right around us. And then the seven year warning, how that comports with the promises of Abraham. Again, the promises relating to the one year cycle of life too, and the 400 years with that. And he gave us wisdom about the seven years, about the end right before it ended. And so based on what we were seeing with the enemy, we had the suspicion, okay, at the very end of the seven years, apparently, we should see a ramp up of the enemy activity. 
And that happened to be February 11th, and you'll remember at that time marked an escalation talking about embassies in Ukraine and Russia as well, Belarus a little bit too as well. But you'll remember there was talk of war. Russia is going to invade Ukraine. And Russia was saying, well, maybe we won't. But they were also asking some demands on Ukraine to start making some promises. Don't get involved with NATO when Ukraine went do that. So there was some back and forth during that time, exactly starting on the day of the seven-year warning, right at a time where we're expecting sudden destruction and things about to start hitting the fan. What happened? Exactly on the day, they started ramping up drastically. The world started talking about World War III the possibility of that. Because if Russia gets involved, and maybe we might have to get involved, and then things might get messy. But you'll also remember there's a lot of talk about embassies, evacuating embassies, evacuating ambassadors. But also a lot of talk of not knowing the day or hour. A lot of talk on that. Because the West said, oh, they're going to invade on such and such a day. And then, of course, nothing happened. And eventually even got so ridiculous, even Putin was making the joke of, well, just let us know the day or hour. And so all this, all during this time, since that celestial sign, we've seen prophecy being fulfilled, ramping up, the birth pangs starting exactly on time to the day of the seven-year warning ending. We know where we are. We know it's already been started. The inducing has already started. And we saw all of that. And then came the announcement of the invasion of Ukraine with the calls of peace and safety at the UN Security Council and the UN General Assembly. That was not isolated. That was not isolated. That is just the cherry on top of everything that we've seen building since the celestial sign. That great and terrible day of the Lord's coming, that sun destruction that you've been anticipating, it's coming here. It's finally coming. The seven-year warning, it's over. Time to start the inducing of the sun destruction. And it started right on the dot. Right on the dot. Right at the same time, the enemy who knows the time, who knows the significance of the passage of time is mocking Christians and talking about evacuating ambassadors and not knowing the day or hour. They know what time it is. They know what they've started too. They know they've started inducing the baby, the baby of sudden destruction, because they know the significance of the passage of time. The passage of time since a celestial warning went out that that great and terrible day of the Lord is coming. And friend, as we see that, and we hear these high-level calls of peace and safety. We see the birth pangs. We see them inducing it and making it worse to bring it about daily. We know where we are. We're at the end of time. We're nearing the end of the grace window. The countdown for sudden destruction. And it is in context as we back up and look at this whole picture, particularly with reminders of the celestial Events that happened in the past, what have happened recently, the beginning and the end, how there was a first part, there's going to be a second part, the first part has already been done, the second part is about to start. He's about to start making his enemies his footstool. He sat down at the right hand of the throne of God when he finished the first part, but he's going to be standing back up again. And the Son of Man is coming during the days of Noah and Lot to start the second part. And here we are at the second part, right at the threshold that reminds us of the beginning and the end. Right at the end of a countdown, which reminds us of the passage of time. And as we look back, we can see even more clearly now in hindsight how the enemy was fully aware of the importance of that celestial sign back in November 19th and December 4th. The significance of that because that's when they started ramping up their Russia and Ukraine efforts. It was in late December that Russia talked about their Allied Resolve 2022 upcoming exercises with Belarus that would take place sometime in February or March. And they claimed then that they didn't quite have the exact date ironed out at that point. But mid and late December, they were already preparing for the upcoming exercises in Belarus. And as we heard later, they've been preparing for what happened on February 23rd for several months. So we know around the same time frame, they know those military exercises are going to turn into something else. And they were making the preparations and starting to move the equipment at the late December. Just a few days after that celestial sign tells us the great and terrible day of the Lord's coming. They were already setting things in motion, already inducing labor, even at that point, knowing what it was going to be used for. Knowing what it was going to be used for. And you may remember in hindsight some of the news I was talking at that time, how people were starting to notice Russia is moving a lot of equipment for such an exercise. And eventually they said, yes, this is going to be our largest exercise. But even people were starting to notice all the trains. They were moving a lot of equipment and people were saying, 
I don't think this is going to be a normal exercise. And they were having talks with NATO at the same time too, trying to get them to back off on Ukraine and stay out of Ukraine. And that wasn't going very well too. So NATO was even talking then about, hey, you're building up for something else here. And they were suspecting that Russia was trying to strong arm the negotiations and all that. So these subjects were already coming up in late December. And then around January 14th, Russian forces earmarked for the joint military exercise in Belarus began combat readiness checks and redeployment to be completed by February 9th. Preps have involved up to 200 transportation trains moving hardware day and night. Late December they set things in motion but by January 14th they were already starting to move a bunch of stuff and people were really observing. Hey, this is 200 trains worth of tanks and equipment going near, right near the border of Ukraine. Something is up. Something is up. And you also remember right around that time of the one year anniversary of Biden's inauguration that Biden puts 8,500 troops on prepared to deploy orders over Ukraine crisis. Right at late January, this was already starting to boil up. They saw Russia moving troops, but now Biden is starting to send troops over and NATO is starting to do a little bit of reinforcing in that area too. Both sides are getting ready. Both sides know where it's going because they're of one mind. But it is as we look at the broader picture, several things can click of what we heard in the news. We could see how things were going, how they were building since the celestial sign. And that was right at that same time that the U.S. orders families and diplomats to immediately leave Ukraine. Again, right in context of these peace and safety markers, these one year and two year anniversaries coming around, when we knew already some destruction should be starting any day now, the birth pangs should be starting any day now. And they were starting a lot more than we were aware of at the moment, but we could already see certain things, but they were moving for the whole enchilada at that same time too. Then again, February 11th to the day of the seven year warning ending, Biden tells Americans in Ukraine, leave now and to evacuate the country in the next 24 to 48 hours, mentions world war. Again, this is a relatively small time frame to see how quickly the world changed since that celestial sign, where normal relations with Russia and America and NATO and EU quickly started deteriorating rapidly. And we observed and heard all this in context of other things even before the major peace and safety call that we did finally hear on February 23rd when it became apparent what they were doing and that they were committing all in at that point. It was irreversible, particularly with the sanctions, everything we could see at that point they were definitely inducing the baby and trying to accelerate the birth pangs. Why? Because they knew they were at a certain time where they could pace what they were doing with a passage of time because the passage of time is very significant. And they know that. And something tells them, somehow they know, when that sun destruction will be coming. A very close ballpark of when the Antichrist sun of perdition will be unrestrained. When judgment is coming because there is a countdown. We are in the days of Noah and Lot and they are doing everything to induce the sun destruction right now. We do not know the day or hour, but we can see we are just about out days and hours. And it is in context as we go forward in faith with what our Father is showing us, giving us so much wisdom and insight that He can also show and remind us of 100 days, the days of knowing a lot, where we are right now. Let's pay attention. Where are we right now? What is unfolding right now? What is He showing us right now? Because we are running out of time right now. Therefore, we need to watch today where we are right now. We need to be sober where we are right now. We need to be sober today. Redeeming the time. Being aware that we're running out of time. We are running out of time. Again, definitely review the timeline. Links are in the description box. Be absolutely sure to download the PDF resources that are linked in the description box. Read them. Study them. Why are you here, friend? Why are you here? Why are you watching this video? Because our Father brought you across our path. He wanted you to see some things about the time. Get an understanding of how short time is. He is the one who brought you here. There are things he wants you to see that are here. Things that will tell you about this time, give you an understanding from a biblical perspective. And these resources cover a lot of information. When to watch. We are commanded to watch. Even though we are told we won't know the granular exact day or hour, we are told that's why we need to watch. We are actually commanded to watch. And so part of being a wise and faithful servant is doing what we are commanded to do. And listening and having an ear to hear. Of what we are told to listen to, what we are told to watch, and what we are told to do. 
Understanding Matthew 24, great article, a lot of people get confused about that chapter a lot. They build it and they plan it. What are the days of Noah unlocked? That's definitely worth reviewing right now. The last generation, when are these things going to happen? What are the first and second comings? The rapture in the Old Testament. Most Christians don't know it's well talked about in the Old Testament, and Jesus Christ himself repeated it to the disciples, and Paul repeated it to the disciples too. It wasn't a mystery. What is a mystery is the changing of our body. How will that happen? Paul doesn't know. We don't know. That's a mystery. The rest we already know because it's from the Old Testament. Escape from what? What is the falling away? The Harpazo promise caught away. Peace and safety, that's a great review of how the call started in 2015 with the Star Bethlehem signs and they were ramping up since then bringing us right to where we are now, the cherry on top where they are inducing the baby. Be ye ready. They build it and plan it again. Shall he find faith? What is Jesus Christ looking for when he returns? How does he want to find us? Beware the tribulation snare. What is your price? Evacuation time frame, evacuation procedures, letters to the seven churches, the wise bride and servants, the foolish bride and servants, legal appointments, which is very important in Christ's instructions. Running for the prize. Running to win. Running to win what? It's not salvation. A study of grace and works. Treasures and the crowns. Parable of the faithful servants. Parable of the ten virgins. Parable of the talents. What does it mean to be worthy? Buying oil. The bride of Christ. Raisings, resurrections, and returnings. We are sealed till the day of redemption. But there's multiple days of redemption. Not everybody's going to be redeemed at the same time. If you miss one, you miss the rapture, that doesn't, the rapture doesn't save or unsave anybody. Everybody will eventually stand before the Lord at one time. Maybe not when they want to, but everybody will. You can find all these resources and a lot more, many, many more, about celestial events, about time, the mark of the beast, so many more resources at rapturelibrary.com, rapturelibrary.com. Again, review our High Watch Review playlist so you can see how the enemy has been especially working since these celestial signs that we've seen. We know that they've been very busy during this time, but how the celestial heavens have been declaring a beautiful picture reminder about the tapestry of redemption. Reminding us of the Lion of the tribe of Judah, who is the Lamb of God, who was offered on our behalf, became our offering, became our high priest, became our mediator when we put our faith and trust in him. And it is our understanding of redemption that shows us where we are in prophecy. What he has finished, but what he is still about to do. And that informs us about where we are, and we will see that day approaching, the more that we understand what that day is. We have heard so many trumpet calls. The Lord has shown us so much. Praise his name for all the insight and wisdom and strength that he has given on this incredible celestial learning journey. A beautiful tapestry of redemption that the more that we see that, it draws us even closer to his heart and to his side. The more that we see that he loved us, we love him in return. We should. And that is the call, the midnight cry, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Do you know him? How well do you know him? Is he just some acquaintance to you, or is he your friend? Are you drawing nigh to him with a true heart, a genuine heart, a purified heart, a sanctified heart? Are you supping with him? Are you watching and praying always? These are the questions that come up in light of the redemption story. It's all predicated on, do we know who is coming? The bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. And we're going to demonstrate that with our life, with our hands, with our feet, with our eyes, with our lips, with our heart. And this is why we need to rise up, we need to trim our lamps, we need to cast off the works of darkness, we need to cast off the weights that are holding us back, the cares of this life at this time. We need to rise up and go out to meet the bridegroom. And so friend, we see that time is short. We've seen a passage of time, and over this passage of time we've been shown the tapestry of redemption, we've been shown that time is running out, we've been shown the days of Noah and Lot, we've been shown where we are, and we've also been shown what's on the horizon too. So we need to live accordingly, friend. So let's live as though we see the bridegroom cometh. And let's go out to meet him together, you and me. Hearing him, heeding him, loving him, and serving him. First and highest above all else, redeeming the time till he comes. Maranatha. Maranatha.